Hi everyone, Leo Rizzi with another Jumps to Lightning episode. Today I have the WeWorks team with me, continuing the conversation about all things GitOps. We're going to talk today about the Flux VS Code extension, um, OCI, and everything in between. Play the music. Hi everyone, Leo Rizzi with another Jumps to Lightning episode. I have Kingdon and James with me from the WeWorks team. We're continuing the video series with, uh, with WeWorks. I'm super excited about this. First things first, Kingdon, James, welcome to the show. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Well, uh, Kingdon, I want to start with you. First thing first, who you are and what is it that you do? Well, my name is Kingdon Barrett. I'm an open source support engineer on the developer experience team at WeWorks. I'm a Flux maintainer. And I'm also working on the VS Code extension for Flux, uh, VS Code GitOps tools. Awesome, awesome. James, how are you doing? Good, good. Yes, I'm a director of product uh, here at WeaveWorks and oversee Weave GitOps and Weave GitOps Enterprise, which are two products that are taking Flux and extending it to with more capabilities. You know, Kingdom James, I've been you know, I've been using Flux for, for a while now, since actually since started using um, Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes. Obviously, there is a partnership between between the two teams. Um, and before that, I wasn't super familiar with GitOps concepts. Um, you know, that was probably four years ago. Um, and since I started doing demos around those things and start really working with GitOps, um, I really thought to myself, how come more people are not using those things? Um, but I also know that it's a very advanced, uh, advanced concepts uh, when it comes to maturity of organizations. The first question that I have, Kingdom, is for you. Maybe share with me a bit the lay of the land right now, the way you see it with, when it comes to GitOps. Sure. Um, so as far as GitOps and Flux, uh, Flux is working on uh, the maturity of the project uh, towards graduation. So there's a graduation that's up for vote right now. And uh, Flux is working on general availability of Flux. Um, in terms of GitOps as a broader concept, I think that there are a lot of new patterns that we're starting mm. to see emerge based on new features in Flux, uh, especially OCI and uh, Cosign integration. Uh, so we're going to see some of those features today. You know, uh, you mentioned something very interesting, which leads me to a question that I want to ask you, James. Uh, patterns. Um, you know, it's all about patterns. When we're developing a product, even here, you know, with the R crew, it's always about the patterns. What is it that we're seeing people using? What is it that we think people will might want to use? So, James, you know, obviously working on the product very closely. What are the patterns that you're seeing um, out there in the wild? Yeah, I think uh, number one, there are a few people can get confused about what GitOps is in general. You know, just because it's in Git doesn't necessarily mean you're doing GitOps. Um, yeah. And so how do you define that pattern and make it easy for people to onboard? I think number two is, you know, we are also seeing this pattern of not just deploying your Kubernetes applications via GitOps, but all sorts of different resources, right? And so it's kind of horizontally starting to go across various things like the TF controller, uh, Terraform controller that we have within we've mm. GitOps. Um, and then finally, the, the last piece is just working with it in general. So even once you've adopted GitOps, um, it can be, there could be some friction there. And so mm. we're trying to define new patterns to just make it easier to work with so you can adopt the model and not lose any productivity at the same time. So Thank you for that. And James, I know that you have a cool demo to show me. Kingdom, before I'm switching to the demo, there is there is one more question that I wanted to ask you, which is, you know, James, James was talking about the patterns and what, you know, what do we see there? One question that I have for you is around maturity of organizations. You know, when I'm talking to when I'm talking to organizations that are um, even the ones that are very mature in their Kubernetes practices, which is not something that you can take for granted, you know, with you know, with every, with all the complexity that comes with maintaining a full-blown Kubernetes infrastructure and architecture. What are the what are, what are the maturity challenges that you're seeing in the context of GitOps in order for people to really transition to that model? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, for me, the biggest hurdle that I see people approaching in adoption of GitOps is the platform itself. Uh, have, have to have platform support 
or you have to build it yourself. Those are really the choices, right? So if you don't have that platform support in your organization, you still want to see some set of guardrails that are going to help you avoid pitfalls uh, since it's a complex top topic, like you said, there are always going to be yeah. pitfalls. Um, yeah. So uh, we with we've GitOps, we'd like to see uh, a lot of that happening, and, and we'll see some of that shortly. Uh, but also, the VS Code experience uh, is to, designed to help keep you in your editor as an application developer. So maybe uh, you're an application developer and not a platform engineer, and you'd really like to spend most of your time focused on building your app. Um, hmm. Maybe your boss would really like to see that. Uh, for your productivity. Uh, so so that's the sort of experience that we're trying to build with the VS Code extension. All right. So thanks for that. And, and you know, this is a good segue. So James, I want to I wanna transition to you and, uh, and into the demo that you have to show me. Obviously, this is all about how do you actually interact with those, with those things? And VS Code kind of became the de facto standard for a lot of developers, a lot of SREs, a lot of DevOps engineers just kind of work with. So what is it that you have to show me today? Yeah, so we have a, uh, a new feature within Weave GitOps called GitOps Run. And what this does is this one makes it super easy to onboard to GitOps if you're mm -hmm. new to it. And number two, whether you're new to GitOps or you're an existing GitOps user, it makes it very easy to work with. And it creates a live uh, feedback loop between your current working directory and the cluster that you're connected to at the moment. And so I already have a command here, you know, GitOps beta run dot slash my app dash dash no session, which means no sandbox. I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter. Mm -hmm. And right now what it's doing is it's connecting to the cluster and seeing if Flux is installed, which it's not, this is a brand new cluster. And so it's going ahead and installing Flux for us. And then what it's going to do from there is it's going to check to see if the Weave GitOps dashboard is installed. And if it's not, it's going to give you the option to install it and just set it up with the default user, just making it super simple. And then after that, it's going to set up that live reconciliation loop. So you can work within VS Code, right? You don't have to leave it, but you can start to see live your cluster being configured the way you want it to. And, and so, J James, while this is deploying, I wanted to ask you a question because you were talking about uh, the fact that it goes and install Flux if Flux is not installed in the cluster, right? What about Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters? How does that how does that work in conjunction to those clusters? Uh, as long as Flux is installed, it should verify and see that it's installed, and you should be able to use Flux. Um, Right, Flux is just the prerequisite to yep. using this feature, which is why we install it. But there really should not be any hindrance there, right? Because All right. it can just leverage the existing Flux install. All right, because we do have like the Flux extension is you know the integration with Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters is very tight, right? And also with AKS, I mean this those two things are going hand in hand. And I just wanted to understand like the relationship between what you're showing me right now and what is it that we can do from the Azure side of the house in terms of deploying the extensions. So, yeah. So there's a tighter integration with the VS Code extension and Azure that we can take a look at uh, if we have time. Um, but basically the, the short version of this is when you enable GitOps in the VS Code extension, it's gonna look at your cluster to figure out whether it's an Azure cluster or whether it's an off uh, Azure cluster that has been ARC enabled, and it's going mm -hmm. to um, pr present you with a series of prompts that will help you based on wh whether you have ARC installed or not. Uh, and, and the workflow is designed to be very smooth. Okay. Nice. So we have GitOps run up and running now, and you could go ahead. When did a few things, right? First, it created a path for me because that application path didn't exist and even set up an empty customization. The other thing it did was it automatically set up port forwarding to the Weave GitOps dashboard. And mm. so I can quickly come in here and log into here. And now there are a few things going on. Number one is we now have a live environment set up and you can see that with this DevKS here. And so if I come, there's nothing in here right now, but what I can do is I can start to pull some YAML down. So here I have a config map. Mm. I'm going to come in here and do config.yaml. 
right? At that point, GitOps Run has detected that there were changes in the file and it's going to go ahead and sync that with the cluster. And so giving it a moment. So basically, a basically the mechanism right now is that, you know, Flux is using Customize, um, you know, that, that we know. Customize is basically picking up the changes or the, um, I want to say the reference to the file that were either added or updated, correct? And that will basically communicate to the Flux agent to go and deploy that onto the cluster, right? The the application itself that is described in that config YAML, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here in Weave GitOps, we're at the page where we have this live feedback loop. And mm -hmm. so what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start moving some YAML files into our current working directory. And so if I come here and do config.yaml, right, GitOps Run is going to go ahead and detect those changes, and then it's going to sync with the cluster. And what we're going to see is here, I'm missing a namespace from this YAML file. And so it's mm -hmm. going to go ahead and show us an error. And now you can see namespaces, game demo not found. So I'm mm. going to quickly come in here and I'm going to move a namespace into here as well and add that file. And when I do that, right, it's going to go ahead, resolve the changes and everything's up and running. And this isn't just for simple workloads, right? We can do this with anything. And now we can transition to the VS Code extension and show how we can add new applications really easily that way. Kingdom? Yeah, so uh, we're going to show uh, pod info being added uh, via the Weave GitOps extension here. So um, first, what we're going to see is the infamous pod info from, uh, from WeaveWorks. Yeah, this yes. is the, the classic demo here, the classic demo app. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to see is that the cluster has been detected. And if you can push the refresh button up there at the top, um, over next to clusters, it doesn't show until you mouse up there. Yep, push that. We can see that the cluster has Flux installed on it. Hmm. And we can see the health checks are OK. And we also see the Weave uh, GitOps controller there. Um, so uh, what we see as we go down the left-hand panel, we see tree views of our sources and our workloads. These are the basic units of currency in uh, Flux. Um, mm -hmm. Sources are always pulling uh, from an upstream, whether it's a Git repository. See, we have here a Helm repository, a bucket source. That's our dev bucket. Um, and we can also support, uh, besides Git repositories, uh, OCI repository. That is the new feature that we'll be showing off in a, a moment. So if I come and click the plus button here, we can go ahead and add a brand new source and mm -hmm. you have various options here. So you could choose to do a Git repository along with creating a customization. So or... what it's detected here is that you already have a uh, Git repository since you're in a Git repository. That's why it's filled mm -hmm. out this form for you. And uh, pod info here is pre-populated for the example purposes. So you can see, um, so you can- I really like your... the- uh... I really like the compre comprehensiveness of the of the extension. Like I like the fact that you get this in a very a very visual fashion. Um, you know, knowing what it's like to work with Flux just from a CLI standpoint, um, and also trying to understand the dependencies. And also coming back, James, to what you what you just showed us. You know, when you added the namespaces and then got resolved itself with you know with that dependency mapping, that was pretty cool. Yeah, we're really aiming here for this should be your first experience with GitOps and it should be smooth. So right. we're going to come here and make a few small uh, tweaks here just to the name. And uh, what, what's in this OCI repository here? This is uh, uh, Open Container Initiative. Um, it's basically a Docker repository. Uh, it's used for storage rather than for um, uh, runtime environment, um, uh -huh. and it contains the YAML manifests that were published uh, by Stefan Perdon's Pod Info uh, workflow. So when he pushed a new release, uh, the tag latest was updated, and it contains the mm. manifests 
that are to be deployed. So this is sort of an intermediary step between the Git repository and uh, it's, it's good for security and performance reasons. Kingdom, I know that you've been working very closely with the cosine verification and, and can you share with me a bit of details around this one? Because this is also somewhat of a new concept to me as well, just kind of in terms of how to work with this in a, in a production fashion. Yeah, so um, there are two sides to the cosine integration here. There is the keyed cosine integration and keyless, and we're not promoting mm -hmm. uh, that keyless is ready for production yet, but uh, keyless is very easy to use at this point. And if you're not signing your releases at all, it's a great first step um, to be able to say, hey, we're signing our releases now. Um, so verification is done in Flux at the source level. Uh, so mm -hmm. when you add your OCI repository, it's um, if you follow this workflow and just click, um, uh, if you scroll down to the bottom here, this is what we really want people to see. This um, YAML button here is designed mm -hmm. to give you the YAML to commit to Git so that you can do actual Git ops uh, rather than creating the resources directly on the cluster like we're doing in dev mm -hmm. mode. Okay, interesting. And uh, then as we add, uh, when we get... Um, this installed, we'll add a section to the spec of our OCI repository here. James is going to do it right now. Um, that uh, tells it exactly how to verify. So we're just going to tell it verify with the provider cosign. We don't need to add a secret ref or anything like that because it's using keyless verification. Mm. Uh, and this is the experimental feature of cosign. And again, customize will pick that up the same way as it did for namespace and just kind of update update that application, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so now it's gone and deployed it live here in real time. And if we come back to the VS Code extension, refresh. When you hover over the OCI repository, you can see that cosine verified mm -hmm. latest and the tag alongside it. Very this cool. Is something we also want to add to weave GitOps as well, but it's at least in the VS Code extension for the moment. Well, very cool, very cool. So, um, you know, James Kingdon, uh, that was a cool demo, and I think that it really encapsulates some of the some of the more advanced concepts that are coming with with GitOps, or I even shouldn't say advanced. These are the things that should be kind of fundamental when it comes to the when it comes to the GitOps flow that people are starting to look at. Um, so that was pretty cool. I also like, I really like the fact that customer is just picking things up. Um, you know, when I when I do those GitOps uh, practices and all that, usually, you know, we're just committing a bunch of code into, into the repository and everything just kind of work magically. But this was a bit more of the sausage making when it comes to customize and, you know, the relationship or the dependency mapping between the files and especially with the cosine and, you know, just added to it the OCI YAML. So that was pretty cool. Um, for the uh, so thank thank you for that and for the for the jumpstart audience let us know in the comments below is this is something that you are looking at um, is GitOps something that you are starting to take seriously um, does it meet your organization needs and also if you're already invested in using Flux um, so Kingdon James I wanted to say thank you for uh, for joining me uh, for this jumpstart lightning episode it's been a pleasure and uh, and I learned a lot. Um, and for the Jumpstart audience, make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.